is 3i atlas a mothership for some alien technology coming to earth i don't know but we're gonna be talking about it having this conversation so let's get right into it you floated the possibility that 3i atlas is uh alien technology in order to distract us from the epstein files <laughs> my response to that is go to amazon right now and purchase a half a meter telescope because that would allow you to see the object in the sky. I cannot really fake it. Wow. It's not something I can create with a Jewish laser. Uh, and Jewish uh, laser. because it's so far away, it's like four times the Earth Sun separation. And the Hubble Space Telescope, the Webb Telescope are looking at it in the context of 3i Atlas. This is the third interstellar object discovered on July 1st, 2025. And what was special about it, first of all, the brightness was so large that if you were to assume it's a solid object, it had to have a diameter of 20 kilometers. That's uh, bigger than Manhattan Island, twice as big as the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs. Wow. Um, and it's just extremely rare. Okay, so I calculated. Well, first of all, there should have been hundreds of thousands of Oumuamua sized object. That was just the size of a football field, 100 meters or so. And there are many more small objects than big, uh, than big rocks. But more importantly, the interstellar space can deliver a rock of 20 kilometers at best once per 10,000 years. If you take all the rocky material, pack it into 20 kilometer rocks, uh, once per 10,000 years, you can get one to cross uh, the inner solar system at the speed of 3i Atlas. And we saw it after one decade of surveying the sky. Mm. So that was unusual. And then more <laughs> dramatically, the trajectory of this object is exactly aligned with the plane in which the planets orbit the sun to within five That's degrees. Crazy. And you know, that coincidence is one in 500. Okay, for it to lie exactly in the plane, it means that along its path, it can come very close to several planets. In fact, it comes very close to Mars, Venus, and Jupiter. And it wouldn't be able to do that if it came at an angle. And uh, moreover, it arrives closest to the sun when the Earth is on the opposite side of the sun. So we won't be able to observe it. And that's the best point to make a maneuver using that that's why i'm bringing this up the best point to make a maneuver so if this is some alien technology which is behind the sun right now what is going on what are they doing behind the sun and how are they moving that fast just to think man what in the world could possibly be going on how would this all fit into our christianity biblical perspective which i just obviously if there was some life out there um it wouldn't change anything but it would be wild it would make you think the sun's gravity Moreover, it came from a direction in the sky that uh, is full of stars. Uh, it's the direction of the center of the Milky Way galaxy. And so I was a co-author of a paper that said, uh, is 3i Atlas alien technology? And of course, you know, uh, if it is alien technology, you, you can't do the calculation of the mass in rocks in interstellar space because this object is targeting the inner solar system. And, you know, it will pass closest to the sun on October 29th, uh, 2025. I got a text message the other day from someone who said that he is trading options on the volatility of the market with an expiration date of October 29th in order to make money. And I immediately thought, uh, I don't know if there will be meaning to money if this object turns out to be technological <laughs> after October 29th. If you want to take a vacation, take it before that date um because okay that's like the rapture though like man people freaking out doing stuff just because they someone made this claim that the rapture is coming so on the 29th that's close that's just uh eight days from now wow what we'll have now it could be a mothership that releases pro mini probes you know that they come to earth um the galileo project that i'm leading is looking for unidentified anomalous phenomena and, and and we have now three observatories and we will check if uh, after October there is more activity. You know, that would be interesting to check. Mm -hmm. But um, as of now, you know, people, astronomers, what you will hear is the sort of the party uh, claim that this is um, a comet. A comet, by the way, just like zebra is identified by its stripes, uh, you tell it by the cometary tail. Okay, that's what distinguishes a comet. And in, the, in this case, uh, just yesterday, there was um, the first analysis of the image from the Hubble Space Telescope. 
of this object. And guess what? There is no tail. Uh, uh, but more That's importantly, crazy. there is glow in front of the object instead of behind it. It's got headlights. It's got headlights. <laughs> You're not celebrating Halloween. This That's crazy, man. No, but what if though? I've heard it's like a shield blocking the radiation from it being blown up. Dear, that's the take home message. Just as an English to English translation, if I'm summarizing, there is a large rock that most scientists think is a comet that is bigger than the size of Manhattan, hurling towards space or hurling through space, potentially towards the earth <laughs> that you believe may be alien technology, potentially a mothership, that does not have any of the signs of it's not going towards earth of a comet but has headlights potentially or a glow in front of it and it's scheduled to arrive potentially on earth on october 29th is that accurate not not to earth but uh, to get closest to the sun along its path but avi it's gonna appear when we can't see it, which would be the best time for it to make a sneaky maneuver. Yes, exactly. I mean, you can argue like my colleagues do and say, you know, the trajectory, you know, it's just a random trajectory that happens to be fine tuned and, 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 and so perfectly aligned with all these planets. And, uh, you know, it's a coincidence that it happened to, to come closest to the sun when we can't see it. And it's a coincidence that it passes near all these other planets. By the way, even if you take this trajectory and just arrange for a random arrival time, you get one in 20,000 chance of it coming as close as it does to Jupiter, Mars, and Venus. It, it, it just fine-tuned in the sense that it also comes closest to those planets. Those planets are moving around the sun, you know, in a circle, each of them, and they get to the point where 3 I Atlas is just when it arrives there. Like, how can that happen? Maybe you're crazy. Maybe they're just going to say, Avi's crazy. Or it's just a coincidence. All of these things are, you know, just randomly happening. I don't know. Or maybe it's not. What do you guys think in the comments below? I would love to know because this is crazy. But I can't wait for October next week to see what in the world is going on. But is this sort of the way we have to think? Meaning if you're going to open up the possibility that there's extraterrestrial life, it's got a million or billion years of head start on us, you have to open your mind to the possibility of what if. And so every time you see something that we can't yet explain or we can't yet measure, we get to open our minds and say, what if, what are the possibilities, what's the clinical, scientific, quantifiable way to examine mm. it rather than just dismiss it? Yeah, yeah, or, or assume that it's the same as we have seen before, because that's the usual approach of, of, of scientists, of, of, of anyone. Uh, and, and, and my point is that, uh, in fact, I suggested establishing a new scale between 0 and 10, which is now called the Loeb scale, because I suggested it a month ago, and there was actually a paper yesterday that I co-authored about it. And the idea is a 0 would be an object that definitely shows a cometary tail, okay? Or uh, looks like an asteroid, has all the characteristics that we are familiar with of a rock or an icy rock, that's zero. And 10 would be a, an object that is definitely technological because it maneuvers or has some artificial lights or has some unusual shape or- Right, but we don't see it maneuvering necessarily. Yes, it's on a trajectory, but it's not like, you know, steering at different angles we don't think right transmits signals something or has uh, you know it releases much more heat than you expect from the solar illumination it has some engine that gives it additional heat um, all of these signatures would raise a flag and if it looks like it's technological then there needs to be an organization that is international because the aliens do not care how we split territories on this rock that we were born on. You know, mm -hmm. there is much more real estate out beyond Earth and they would be completely amazed that we are worried. They're like hippies. They don't believe in borders. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, what we decide uh, here on Earth is very local. You know, we, we are obsessed with it. All our politics, geopolitics is all about territories, you know, and uh, they would think, who cares? You know, this is a tiny rock out of so billions of them out there. Uh, but so they would not 
distinguish us based on the nation that we belong to. So therefore, it will be a problem of the of humanity as a whole. And this organization needs to be international. So my recommendation is that will, there should be an organization because, you know, we are worried about existential threats from artificial intelligence. There is a lot of talk about it. Yeah, I just thought of it. What if this is the reason to bring in the Antichrist? Because an alien invasion, something that is bringing the world together. Everyone's worried. Obviously, that's what definitely would bring the world together. If aliens are coming from a different planet, uh, that puts into perspective that our country and our world is pretty small. And um, someone might rise up and be like, hey, let me take charge. We need to have a one world government. Wow, that is wild. From uh, climate change, there is a lot of talk about it. From an asteroid impact, there is modest talk about that. But I'm saying another type of threat would be alien tech. Okay. And there should be an organization that decides what to do. Why? Because when we imagine in the context of contact, you know, the film or the book, if we imagine de detecting a radio signal from a star that is thousands of light years away, you know, there is no urgency. There is plenty of time because it would take them a lot of time to reach us. Even if we respond, we have time to respond. There is no immediate threat. But if you have a visitor in your backyard, you immediately need to decide what to do about it. And that depends on the intent and the capabilities of the visitor and the characteristic, the specific characteristics of the visitor. And each visitor deserves special attention. So my point is this organization, when you know, in the next decade, the Rubin Observatory will discover an interstellar object every few months. We're entering a new phase now. Uh, in the past, in the last eight years, we discovered only three. Okay, so now every three months, there will be a new one. And we need wow. to develop a strategy of how to deal with things that are high on this lobe scale of, of, of uh, risk uh, that are above five, let's say. We, we need to de develop a, a response to that, especially if it's close to 10. You know, we need to decide how to deal with that. And uh, we haven't thought about that. There is no such organization and nobody discusses it. You know, there is a fundamental question whether that was a result of a visit by some interstellar gardener that decided to introduce intelligence into this planet. Uh, and uh, we just don't know because it's not documented. Humans yep. documented. He what if they're not friendly? History over the past um, 8,000 years or so. Uh, and, you know, one reason I, I'm seeking intelligence uh, in interstellar space is because I don't often find it in academia. I've been under the assumption that the process of evolution, the way I was taught as an undergraduate in graduate school was accurate. Am I supposed to entertain the possibility that there was an interstellar visit from a being that inserted intelligence into our evolutionary DNA? It's possible. And let me bring another possibility. You know, we think that uh, 66 million years ago, there was a giant uh, rock the size of Manhattan Island that killed the non-avian dinosaurs. What if that was not a rock, but some giant thing that uh, collided with Earth uh, to reset uh, the biological life on Earth? Or, you know, there are all kinds of events if you go back hundreds of millions of years. And we just don't know. It was never documented. We don't know what happened. Uh, we know that the uh, common ancestor of life it's called Luca, the last universal common ancestor. Right now, it was dated by DNA to have appeared 4.2 billion years ago. You know, that was uh, the Earth formed around 4.5 billion years ago. And within 300 million years, life started with this uh, common ancestor. And we don't know where it came from. It could have come from Mars because Mars cooled before the Earth. It's a smaller body. It had more surface area for its uh, mass than the Earth, and therefore it could have cooled earlier, and life could have started on Mars. We know it had lakes, uh, rivers, oceans of water, just like Earth. And, you know, we know that the, the two planets exchanged rocks. And if life started, if Luca uh, was first on Mars and delivered to Earth with a rock, this is called panspermia, that's the delivery of life in rocks, um, then what Elon Musk is trying to do right now is return to our childhood home. Uh, <laughs> in fact, there were astronauts, tiny astronauts, microbes in the cores of, 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 of these early rocks that were the first um, to, to, to make the trip from Mars to Earth. And Wow, that's crazy stuff.
So I'd love to know what you guys think. We're going to find out what this is, but I'm assuming that it's just going to be a rock. I'm sorry, guys. Sorry, it's just a rock. But who knows? Who knows? But God is in control. He is good. He is faithful, and we can trust in him. So, guys, I encourage you to keep on trusting in God and know that he loves you. He's longing to have a relationship with you. So put him first. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I encourage you to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't. Guys, I'm trying to hit 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and I know we can do it with your help. So thank you so much for all the love and support. It means the world. Anyway, guys, have an amazing day, and God bless.